Hello and welcome to Truth and Judgment. Today is Media Monday and we are reviewing a fan favorite, Batman Hush. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Titus. We're supposed to be covering on the basis of sex today. What? But I wore my Batman shirt. Yeah, that doesn't matter. Um, the, we're supposed to be covering the movie of, it's based on Ruth Bader Ginsburg and her journey fighting sexual discrimination. Oh man, you know what? Just just give me a second. Yeah, I'm gonna... Two hours later. Today we are reviewing an underrated film on the basis of sex. I'm Titus. And I'm Alex. Let's jump right into it. So, Titus just watched the movie. He wasn't expecting that we had to watch today. Uh, but will you please give us a brief summary of what you just watched? Sure. On the Basis of Sex is about the life of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and it follows her journey to become the legend we know today as she tackles the problem of gender discrimination in the law. And it also shows how the society is changing between the 50s and the 70s, along with her relationship between her family and specifically her daughter in the film. And so that leads me into, would you recommend this movie to somebody else? I would. Um, I felt that the movie was a great way for our generation to kind of engage with the social problems that our parents and grandparents dealt with, because it kind of presented the information in a way that makes it still relevant to where we are today. Um, and I thought it was an extremely engaging film. Uh, the actress, Felicity Jones, who plays Ruth Bader Ginsburg, did her story absolutely amazing. She followed it and gave it the right justice that it really deserved. Um, so, yes, I thought it was an... I would definitely recommend it to somebody else. I think I would, too. I really enjoyed watching this movie and exploring the dynamics of the law and the justice system and how all that stuff ties in and works together. And I liked how the movie progressed in a logical and engaging fashion. The really brought the audience in and we really felt um, like we were part of the time in the era and we could not really understand where everybody was coming from. And I think the reason it floats so well was probably because of the fact that it was based on a true story, even though I typically don't uh, like historical type movies, this one was done very well. So. That being said, you just you just said you're not a real big fan of historical movies and things like that, whereas I'm actually a pretty big fan of them. Um, but what was your favorite part of the movie overall? My favorite part of the movie is when she's teaching her class and she's describing all of the laws that discriminate based on gender and the court case that specifically started all. And she goes, determined that the discrimination is on the basis of sex is legal in more or less words. And the buildup to that scene, along with the execution, the acting, cinematography, uh, cinematography, how it all tied together, it really comes together quite well and it gives me chills every time. That was also one of my favorite parts of the film, although I think one of my, like, my top favorite part was actually prior to that, in the very beginning, when her husband's diagnosed with testicular cancer. And she starts attending his classes as well as her own in order to help her husband not fall behind because he's bedridden. And when she goes into the classroom, the professor is like, you're going to take his classes as well as your own. And she's like, yep. And he's just like, all right, well, let's keep rolling into the lesson. And then he follows that basically just rolling into the quote with the court should never be influenced by the weather of the day but inevitably they will be influenced by the climate of the era. And I mean, that just, that, that really, I really felt that in my soul and I felt that it kind of set the precedent for the movie overall as the movie progressed throughout each time period and it showed Ruth Bader Ginsburg and her progression. I felt that that line alone really set the message of the film. That's very interesting. Uh, so with that in mind, what were your least favorite parts of the film? Well, overall, I felt that the film had very few weak points. Um, it was pretty hard to find a least favorite part of the film, if I'm honest. Um, however, 
if I had to choose one, uh, it would be during the point in time that they are going to be, they're going to court for this case, and it's like the make or break case that's going to set the precedent for gender discrimination and how it's not allowable in the court of law. And this is a case that her husband and her have been working on for months, at least months, if not longer. And it shows throughout the movie that her husband is this confident and rather well-spoken man who's mm -hmm. been to court multiple times, who's talked to judges. And we don't get to see that when he starts talking to the judges in the court case. He kind of botches it and he keeps saying, leave it to my co-counsel, leave it to my co-counsel, leave it to my co-counsel. Like, he's not properly addressing the judges. And we even see him when they do a mock a mock courtroom. He's even giving her advice that he tries to use, but he doesn't use effectively, even though he's the one that's used it before. So it just... It didn't fit his character since throughout the movie he's been this confident, well-spoken individual, and then he just goes to botching the entire performance in that court case. I agree. However, what really did it for me was the scene in the beginning of the movie where she had just gotten back from the Dean's dinner party, and she was going on a rant about it and complaining, like, uh, like telling how horrible he was and how he could like say those types of things and all that stuff and then her husband like unzips her dress and they have a you know a cute little moment and i was just sitting there like oh, i don't need to see this why like why why is this a thing for me it didn't really add anything to the movie in any way and it wasn't necessary to express their relationship in that way when you see how close they are in other ways and how much they care for each other in the way that they communicate and interact in just their every day-to-day -day lives. Fair enough. I can understand that sentiment. Um, I don't necessarily agree with it. I thought the scene kind of, kind of established about a little bit more about how much they cared for each other because at that point in the film, it was relatively early. And we hadn't really seen too much of their interaction, so I think it helped build. Although, looking at the rest of the film, I could see where you think that it might be a bit of a superfluous scene. Um, but were there any other really big messages or themes in the movie that you felt should be mentioned to our audience? Uh, yes. So, the movie really dives into the kind of everyday interactions with people in the society. And it shows not necessarily how life was like back in the day, but more along the lines of we get to understand how the general population thought and assumed how things were. And it allows us, the audience, to really get a feel of what Ruth Bader Ginsburg had to go through. And we get to understand her character a bit more as a result of that. Yeah, I think that the movie really drives home the message that uh, despite the overall theme of society, uh, we're always changing from generation to generation, and it's important to pay attention to the society around you and kind of grow with it. We, we can't be stuck in the times just because that's the way it's always been. So I thought that was a valuable message. Um, so yeah, um, I think that was one of the messages that I think needed to be stated. So why do you think this movie is so underrated? I feel like the marketing team honestly kind of failed them. I mean, you and I both are pretty avid moviegoers. Uh, we've seen movies that we would never watch just because they were the only thing in theaters. And we both didn't hear about this from the theaters or from uh, trailers. You heard about it while you were on an airplane mm -hmm. and you told me about it. So, I mean, I feel like marketing team kind of failed as far as presenting the movie in a way that our generation would find engaging. Um, overall, what would you rate this film on a scale of 1 to 10? Uh, I, me personally, I think I would rate it like an 8. It was a solid movie. Uh, I really enjoyed it, but it wasn't quite a 9 or a 10. Um, I, would, I would give it a solid 9 out of 10. I mean, I'm a pretty big historical movie guy, and I appreciated the accuracy, and its message was still valuable for today's society, so that's why I would give it a 9 out of 10. Mm -hmm. um, but before we end the episode, uh, 
please tune back in on our following Wicked Wednesday, where we're going to be discussing gender equality in a little bit greater depth and how it's applicable to today's society. Uh, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on the current topics and new movie reviews. Uh, and to the fan who wanted to see Batman Hush, I'm sorry. Uh, I wish we uh, wish we had been on the same page for that. Tell us what your thoughts and critiques are in the comment section down below. We make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so hit that notification bell so you can get notified every time we post a new video. And while you're at it, check out one of our older videos and let us know what you think. This has been Veritas at Eodicium. Thank you, and goodbye. <laughs>